Radio, good morning, grade tens. This is it. It's your practical assessment task for engineering, graphic, and design. And we've gone through this uh, just before the lockdown, but uh, I've uh, created a revised pace setter for us uh, just to uh, kind of navigate our way through this year. Um, but your pack task remains a civil design project. And um, I'm going to talk you through a little bit more in detail on this project. We've done this in class, but I think it's important to just revise it a little bit. So let's get straight to it. First of all, your scenario. What is it that you are tasked with? Now, remember, you are an architect and you are representing your own firm. So let's look at it. At it. A local Jeffreys Bay property developer, Buchner Propvest, will be launching a new high-end retirement village at the end of this year. Your architect firm has been asked to submit a complete design proposal. That's important. Complete design proposal for their consideration, detailing the design and construction of a modern single bedroom granny flat, granny flat and your completion date is the 12th of October. So, that is typically a smallish development, retirement village development, uh, where you now have to come up with a design proposal and you will have to present it to the directors of Buchner Propvest for their consideration. Now, let me highlight this complete design proposal. That would require for you to do the full design process from design brief, specifications, constraints, your research into it, and then also in a um, in, in drawings, proposing your solution to this problem. So let's have a look at what is the specifications that was specified. First of all, the, a maximum of 45 square meters, excluding the porch. So that means you can have an outside porch area and that will not count towards your 45 square meters. This will include this 45 square meters must include a one bedroom, a ensuite bathroom with guest access. And that's, this is interesting that they've said with guest access. In other words, your visitors need to be able to access the bathroom without going to through the main bedroom. Okay, so you, although your resident needs access, direct access, ensuite access to the bathroom, the guests, they will require different access to that same bathroom. You'll have to have a kitchen. Every home has a kitchen. You'll have a living room area. And remember, this is going to be for retired um, a, a, a client. So this living room might also include where they do their hobbies, their sewing, um, you know. So just keep that, maybe afternoon reading, keep that in mind. You'll have to have natural sunlight and air ventilation incorporated. And of course, wheelchair friendly. So these are given specifications. Now, let's just take a moment and think about that. There's possibly here another 20, 30 specifications that you can come up with yourself. Let's think about one or two of those examples, for instance. If we now look at, for instance, the bathroom, and we have to think a bit more into that. If you think it's a granny flat, would you think a bath or a shower would be more appropriate. Yes, of course, a walk-in shower, right? But that shower will need, for instance, uh, handles, uh, safety handles uh, to support uh, uh, um, the person entering. The f there couldn't be any steps in your bathroom. You know, you, you would like to keep the, the, the floor surface uh, clean of any obstruction, clear of any obstruction. Um, those kind of things are additional specifications that you can add on to that. The same with your kitchen. What specific would you like in that kitchen? You would like a stove, a kitchen zinc. Uh, we will have to include a dishwasher. Those are all specifications that you can add on here. So you need to be a bit more creative. They've given you the basics, but you will have to add a bit more. Constraints. If you think about constraints now, um, you are constrained by your 45 square meter. All right. So you cannot exceed 45 square meters. That's a constraint. Okay. Another constraint here is um, going to be hidden here in our scenario 
it's a new high-end retirement village. Okay, so they're going to look for something that is innovative, that is um, out of the box. So you can have a constraint that states, for instance, that uh, this design cannot be a traditional uh, uh, um, uh, um, granny flat. That's a constraint. It cannot be just like your traditional brick and mortar granny flat. So that is going to be a constraint. Here they actually said a modern uh, single bedroom granny flat. So you can think about that a little bit more. What is requested is you'll need to have a front page uh, showing a one point perspective of your granny flat. You'll have to have an index. Now I want to just ask that you leave these two items right till the very end. Okay, we're going to really start here. These two will happen at the end. What's the first thing that you're going to do in your own words a one paragraph design brief okay in other words it's basically what is stated here but in your own words okay and you can elaborate a little bit but it's one paragraph it's three or four sentences in your own words then the second paragraph detailing your role in the design process okay so what what does that mean remember you are the architect so you have to just describe here your role in it you're going to start that paragraph with something like as the architect i am taking the lead on this pro um, the design process and we're going to start with research where after we're going to do three or two concept designs where after we are going to do our selection of our final design we're going to do a floor plan two elevation so you're basically listing here what you know what you're going to do in a paragraph very shortly you're going to list that okay then you have to have a comprehensive list of at least 15 specifications now remember you've already got one two three four five six seven here okay so you need to come up with eight new ones and it can be elaborations on each one of these or it can be completely maybe you want to just specify only um, non-slip tiles for instance um, or you want to specify carpets in the living room that's the kind of specifications you can come up with um, and a list of at least five things constraining you restrictions here okay um, which I have mentioned. All right, so come up with five there. Then you have to have proof of relevant research and a summary of research to be used. Okay, um, I'm going to try and just deselect this quickly for a moment here. Okay, not working. All right, we're going to continue like this. Okay, so proof of relevant research and a summary of research. And I'm going to go into this a bit deeper now with examples, but. Um, it's two to three pages research, two freehand concept designs that each include a floor plan. Okay, so each one of your concepts needs to include a floor plan, one of the elevations, labels, key measurements, floor areas, all drawings must comply with designs. I'll talk this in detail through just now. Table and criteria considering during the selection of the final design with description of any changes to be made, chosen concept, do that. Scale floor plan, two elevations, full section, one point bibliography. Okay, we're going to go up to point number five here in this specific video. So, and I'm going to show you samples of all of this. So, just hold on with me. Let's go. All right. If we talk about research, ergonomics relating to layout and design of kitchens and bathrooms. Okay. So, ergonomics is how the human relate to its environment. Okay. So, if you're thinking here, um, for instance, every chair that you sit on, you know, there's certain criteria for that chair to be comfortable for most people. So what's the things in a granny flat that will be um, similar to all grannies? You know, what are the things that in the layout and the design of the kitchen bathrooms is going to be important to consider for you? That's, for instance, the height of the cabinets in the kitchens, you know, the um, width of door openings in the bathrooms those kind of things how does will a granny specifically relate to your environment in that house and then optimal design requirements and land options of a granny flat so i'm going to give you great examples of this how will we optimally lay out these granny flats okay all drawings must be drawn according to scale and meet sun standards that's uh, a fact then the following should be included in the floor plan okay 
All that man just north at a scale, all that was going to come out of the blah, 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 blah. All right, so these things, uh, this is going to be in part two. We'll focus on that. Okay, here we are at the revised EGD pay setter for grade 10. Now, remember, we sh this should have been in the original dates in May. Now, we haven't seen each other, so we're seeing each other next week, and this will be your handing dates for your design brief. That's the 3rd of June. Your research, 3rd of June. Two freehand concepts, three, 3rd of June. And I'll be talking you through these three items right now and uh, fully explaining that. And then we're going to bump it up till the 28th of June when we will see each other again. When we will talk through the selecting of the best solution here. And then uh, you'll have over the holiday time to prepare your drawing papers. And then we will remember this is the handing date. So in August, we will talk you through all of these. Okay, so there's no rush. Let's um, look at some of the other information that I've given you in your My eBooks folder. Okay, here's a great example of what uh, we're talking about when you're talking about a modern granny flat. Okay, you can see it doesn't look traditional at all. This is already in your My eBooks app, so um, you can have a look at that um, afterwards. But uh, the, this Remember, it's just for you to get some more ideas of what I am thinking and expecting from you. So let's look at the actual floor plans here. Okay, they've given us here four different floor plan designs. So if you look at the um, four designs here, they're just um, playing off each other. But let's look at um, the example here. You can see this is also a granny flat. Now look here, uh, if it's got its living room area, it's got its kitchen here on the side. Okay and uh, two cupboards but look at the placement of the bar uh, the bedroom and the two um the, the the bathroom was actually split with our shower on the one end the toilet on the side and there is the kitchen the, the the basin so you can actually see here how this is still an ensuite technically right access from your bedroom but it's also for your guest access so this is very creative i love this kind of concept let's look at it the next one there's another uh, uh, bit more creative modern granny flat that i'm looking forward to and uh, let's look at this design here okay so here again very similar you see those two areas but now they've changed this to a cupboard there's still my bedroom and here is my shower my toilet and my basin the only problem here with this design is that for the guests to access the bathroom they still need entrance into the bedroom okay so it doesn't doesn't meet our specifications fully but you can see here it's again very creative and they also give some ideas on your outside areas your porches um, this although it looks a bit more traditional uh, the roof structure here and the windows makes it a little bit more modern than we would expect but let's look at the layout here again another example you've got your bedroom a bathroom bedroom living area and kitchen okay problem here again there's not it's not an ensuite bathroom so you, if you use something similar to that you'll have to make some adjustments to it um, there's again more traditional looking but still very modern um, and they've actually got two bedrooms in this option here ah there we almost have something that that you could use huh? just think if you could put in a door here then you have access from the bedroom into the the bathroom and they also have from the uh, living area okay all right so with that said let's um, look at actual uh, design proposals uh, from previous students for you to get a better idea okay it's still early morning so i hope you will excuse my uh, light here uh, but i think you can at least see it clearly um, so this is um, just an example of a design brief the specifications and constraints now, um, this was just the initial paragraph, but remember, you're going to have two paragraphs, okay? You're going to have your specifications and then your constraints. Now, let's, let's look at the research pages, and you can see how well laid out this is. They've used some um, examples of uh, what's available online, and you can really use your research now. During the lockdown, you'll have to be a bit more creative uh, use internet but also please if you do know someone that you can phone you know to consult telephonically maybe a granny that you can phone just to ask a couple of questions 
You know, take a selfie of yourself on the phone, phoning that person or on Zoom, take a screenshot. That would be awesome for me to see that you've actually done a bit more effort than just basic internet research. But again, um, this is now the interview word by word that the person um, did with, with Stocker and Associates. I don't necessarily need you to do this word by word. You can also just list that which you have learned from the conversation. Okay, but I do want a lot more pictures. Pictures is going to be important for us. Okay, here you can see actually um, my student interviewing um, a grandma and a granddad, taking a picture of him with him and some of the things learned regarding the kitchen, bedroom, bathroom. Same here, doing site visits. Now that you might not be able to do, but I do know there's a couple of virtual site visits that can still be done if you just find them online. Um, or, uh, um, you know, just do a bit of research maybe on the construction process of a granny flat and you will find similar images that you can, or videos even, detailing, you know, a time lapse of how things were built. It will be creative for you and something that you learn. Take a screenshot, put that in there. It helps me to understand you didn't just thumb suck a lot of information, but you got a bit more background on that. So, uh, and then the third page here, um, did a bit of dimensioning, heights of counters, etc., ergonomics. Um, all right, and then uh, layouts of bathrooms, etc. Okay, so that's the research. Have a look at that. Um, and this is the kind of quality that I'm looking for. But at least, listen, I do want to say this. Listen to me. I would like much more photos and lot less writing. Okay, uh, this is way too much writing. Um, we need more photos and your thoughts on those photos. That's going to be more important. Okay, then when we get to our freehand uh, concepts, I don't know if you can clearly see here, you're going to need two concepts, okay. Um, the first is going to be just a general floor plan, similar like this one, okay. Um, and you're going to need your, your toilet, your shower, your basin, your kitchen, lounge area, your bedroom. Again, don't look at this design because it's not necessarily correct, but I'm just giving you a detailed overview. Uh, with your measurements and then an elevation um, is only also going to be required. Let's look at the next one. Um, okay, so these are on the designs um, for you to consider. Let me see if I have another example for you. Okay, this wasn't necessarily a granny flat, but you can see here again just the floor plan, how the details look. And they've used the correct um, symbols for a, uh, a toilet and a basin, okay? And your walls are hatched, your door openings, your windows, okay? Your porch area. There's, deta sorry, there's detailed measurements on the side. And there's at least one elevation showing us a front view. So these are some of the things that um, will be important in your freehand drawings. Okay, all the best and uh, let's get uh, going on this pet right now.